Wow. We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live. Welcome, everybody. This is a, this is a lesson in vaping excellence for mixing. Lesson seven. And Fresh, what is it all about tonight? It's all about that bass. About that bass, Brian. Bass. How low can you go? That's right. Yeah. How low can you go, Fresh? Uh, not very low anymore. Not very yeah. low anymore. I, I've, I've got back problems. I have shoulder problems. I've been getting a clicking. Mm. And uh, when I lift my arm up, like, from here, I think it might be like a rotator cuff issue or something. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. My neck, my neck cracks no matter what. Like, just snap crackling and popping back there all day, every day. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Yep. So I'm glad to be back, bro. It's this. This, this is the. Uh, this is the week that we go to Detroit together, you and I. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I was. I was debating whether I should bring the apron. To Detroit. Yeah. I wasn't sure we'd need it. Speaking of the apron. Now, for all those out there that are thinking that this is spelled incorrectly, where it says brain vape chronic. <laughs> um, every time I get shipments from China, my stuff is always spelled wrong, and it always says brain. So I went to uh, Vape Northeast and got a name tag, and it said brain the vape chronic. So that's been an ongoing joke for a long time now. So, But Fresh, thank you so much for... No problem, brother. No problem. I figured this we is... could some tactical aprons. Dude, this is like a military shooting apron or something. It is. It's it's actually made for uh, like gunsmithing. Unbelievable. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I know, right? I got my Sharpie and my eye protection. And it's got like places to put syringes and stuff. Did you ever see, um, what was that movie? Uh... Where the dude was like, you would pay to go to that like meat locker and cut people up in like Albania or something like that. It was like hostile. Hostel? Yeah, hostile. This is like a hostile like apron. Hostile apron. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's like you just you just dangle your meat hooks off the off the off the molly gear straps. Nice. Yep. Yep. Yeah, this was a, such a super gift. I'm so grateful, dude. And it kills. It. It. Well, that, dude. Dinner lady, thank you for the apron, but fuck that apron compared to this one. That's all I gotta say. All right. And thank for those you. that weren't aware, I did hide the uh, TVC Elite and the Yoda patch from him, so the only thing that it had on there that it was uh, brain vape chronic. Yes. Hence not the, only that's the look, the look of extreme pleasure on his face. Yes. When, <laughs> when he opened it. Well, the fact that it's it's actually uh, brain vape chronic is in pink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is even better, and. Uh, it's just awesome, and, and we can actually upgrade. Exactly. Because all this stuff... Here, let me show this off real quick. Do or do not. There is no try. Mmm, -hmm. mm, fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Take pants off, fresh. Green dry I am. Mm. All right, so it says Fresh is quiet, Brian is loud. I have this microphone. Fresh, I think I need to send you. Maybe that's the gift I'll buy you. One of these no, Blue Yeti. I can just turn my volume all the way up. Yeah, I just turn myself down a little bit. Okay. Maybe we're balanced out now. Yeah. If you guys need me louder, let Brian know. I'm not looking at the chat. You know what's really weird? I, uh, for a few weeks... My voice was low, and yours was clear and loud, and it's, like, yeah. switched. And I don't think it's a setting. I think it's the fact that my microphone is just fucking dominant or something. Usually usually it's just one person has their gain up on it too much, a little bit too much. And generally yeah. that's all it is, and you just dial it back just a touch, and everything, everything kind of evens out. Yeah, that's what I did. So, while everybody's telling us how it sounds, mm. um, I want to start this show by... Uh, a little bit of that chocolate love, a little chocolate rain. Little chocolate shakes. Yeah, little chocolate little. shakes. I believe these are Wayne Walker chocolate shakes. From DIY these are, or die. These are, uh, these are DIY or dies chocolate shakes. 
two thirteen seventeen was when we made this. Yes, that was two weeks ago. Yeah. So if you all follow our show and mixed it, why don't you whip yours out if you haven't already jumped into it? And Excuse uh, me while I whip this out. Yeah, whip yours out fresh. <laughs> when I whip mine out, it was dripping already. So. Mm. Mm. Shows how ready you are, or you need a trip to the doctor for a little penicillin shot. Yeah. I stay on penicillin. Penicillin, you get some rosefin. I the put thing, penicillin. It like feels horrible for a bit. I put penicillin in my mixes. What are you dripping yeah, yours in, fresh? Action. So, I'm getting kind of the typical vape chocolate off of it. Um, and then I get like a nice creamy, I get like a nice creamy, like a nice creamy, ice creamy back note. Um, it's not a, it's not a particularly rich, rich back note. I don't think as far as the ice cream goes. Um, the chocolate's not bad. I mean, it's, it's definitely passable. Um, overall, I mean, the vape, the vape, the vape itself, it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice kind of a chocolatey creamy vape. I feel like I want to walk away from the microphone because my gain is too loud, and I don't want to flood you when I'm vaping. Mm. Maybe I could watch. If, if my vape's too loud, everybody, let me know. Yeah. So, you, uh, chocolate ice cream is interesting because there's so many different brands and flavors, and some mm -hmm. chocolate ice creams, like if you get like a haagen Dutch chocolate, it might be different than like a milk chocolate ice cream. Yeah. If you get like a Jack and Jill chocolate flavored ice cream where it's not even real chocolate in there, it's like a more syrup chocolate. So I think that this is like a lower, less chocolate chocolate. It's like a fake chocolate flavor. I'm getting. Um, yeah, I kind of, you know, I kind of get it. Um, kind of like the the supermarket brand chocolate yeah. ice cream. Yeah. Like it's nothing. It's not. It's nothing special. But I mean, you know. It's a, you know, chocolate ice cream and pizza and sex are all kind of the same thing, you know. There's varying, there's varying degrees of quality, but none of them are all that particularly bad. No, it's a good vape. There's no question yeah, about it's a it. Yeah, it's a very good vape as far as, as far as like a chocolatey, creamy type vape, you know. It's, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. But the, um, kind of the point that we were, you know, next week, uh, myself and Brian are going to kind of do our version kind of take a spin on Wayne's recipe and kind of talk through what what we would do differently and why as far as this recipe goes but as far as as far as if you want like a chocolatey creamy pretty close you know uh an ice creamy um it's it's not quite ice creamy it's a little bit creamier than ice cream which is I think is why he calls it a chocolate milkshakes rather than rather than just chocolate ice cream I'm also getting a, a dominant um it, Whatever vanilla is in there, I think it's vanilla bean ice cream. Mm -hmm. I'm getting that sharpness of the of the vanilla. I don't know if you want to call it sharpness, but it's like a uh, almost 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 <clears throat> almost a, a near alcohol on the back of my like where my nasopharynx is. Yeah, that's where I'm getting that flavor. Um, I I would smooth it out a little bit more, but we'll talk about that next week. And yeah, I don't really exactly. know how to, by the way, when I say I'd smooth it out, I don't know what the fuck that means because I don't know how to do that, but that's why Fresh is here, so, yeah. But <laughs> overall, it's probably one of the one of the better mixes that I've made from recipes. I've made way worse my own with my own skill set. Yeah, and I mean, before I really started digging into chocolates recently... I would have been damn proud to do a mix like this. I would have been really proud of this. Um, and it's it's a very good choc it's a very good chocolatey creamy mix, is what I'll say for it. It it accomplishes what it sets out to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How much think, saline did you add? Did you add? I know, that the, I know, like I said, after after really digging into chocolates the last couple months, you know, there's a couple things I would do differently to it. But overall, overall, it's a really really good mix. You know, when Wayne did a really good job with this mix, which I'm a, I'm a fan of pretty much everything that he does. If he puts a recipe out, I'm probably going to make it um, at one point or another. Or if he says somebody's mix is good, I'll probably go make that at one point or another because dude, the dude doesn't – he has a really hard time doing wrong things as far as DIY goes. Especially if he puts it out there. 
Yeah, exactly. If he's putting his name on it, it's going to be a good one. Yeah. And even when I, like, I'll read some of his comments and it'll say, like, uh, this is, you know, the initial version of it. I'm still tweaking it. I'm still working on it. But even in the, the pre-final version, it's still delicious. Yeah, because he's got, he's got such a wealth of knowledge as far as DIYing and, and how flavors play well together. Um, that he's one of those guys that if he puts something out, even, even in the data stage, just go ahead and mix it. And if you leave him a thought, be like, hey, I think this might do something, that might wind up in the final recipe. Like, he's totally open to, to criticisms and, and advice as far as what he could do better with the flavor. Well, that's uh, also why he posts all of his recipes, you know, on on his uh, webpage, on DIYordie.com. Yeah, all the flavors. All yeah. the flavors, DIY or die vaping. Yeah. Good, yep. Good cap. Yep. Um, so, yeah, there we go. So tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about bases, and bases. Uh, so fresh. Why are bases important to the new or even the experienced mixer? Um, getting a base flavor, like a base combination of flavors down for that you like, uh, will take you a long way as far as as far as your future recipes go because you'll have a starting point to go off of rather than having to do everything from scratch every time. Um, if you want, if you find a good cake mix or you find a good strawberry combination that you really, really enjoy, you know, make a note of what you did in that strawberry and you can replicate that strawberry flavor over in like appropriate recipes, or you can replicate that cake recipe down the road. You're like, okay, I remember I really liked that cake note th that I made on that one. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to bring it over here to this recipe and then I'll add this and this, and we'll see how that turns out. But it, it cuts a lot of it cuts a lot of the the research time um a lot of the a lot of the building of your recipe it cuts a lot of that down because you'll have a combination of flavors in the back of your mind that you know is going to work and you know how it tastes and so you're able to just transfer that over to the new recipe and get the notes that you already like and then build upon it and that's what bases are bases are for bases are you cr you have your base and then you build the recipe up on top of that you'll notice also that if as a new mixer myself, I've spent countless hours going to uh, ELR, looking at the top rated recipes and just mm -hmm. clicking on recipes and starting to look at percentages and flavor combinations and brands. Yeah. So uh, you see a lot of like a vanilla bean ice cream, a lot of marshmallow, a lot yeah. of um, just strawberry a lot of the, ripe. a lot of strawberry ripe, a lot of sweet strawberry. Um, a, lo a lot of the things that we talked about last week when we talked about building up your, your, uh, arsenal of flavorings a lot of that stuff is in most of these recipes in your flavor profile so like i love bakery i love uh creamy sweet decadent dessert vapes so for me a lot of the similar flavors are going across the board but it's amazing and 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 fresh <clears throat> we talked about uh you know what who was it that talked about that oh i was watching a show on wayne's channel Mm -hmm. about cloning about cloning because you know anytime you have a youtube channel everybody always says i love loaded glazed donut i want you to clone loaded yeah. glazed donut for me um and they think it's as easy as oh well i know what this flavor tastes like this flavor tastes like this flavor tastes like and this flavor tastes like so it should be easy for me to clone this flavor and i thought about it and i said wait a minute if you okay so check this out so you have a lock like a master lock right and there's three number combinations, and you have nine numbers per combination, right? Yeah. And it's only three spots to figure out, right? It's not that big a deal. But if you actually do the math and play it out of how many potential combinations there are with only three single-digit combinations, but when you're dealing with a recipe of eight flavors, every single one of those flavors could be millions of different flavors from companies, and then... We're dealing with two percentage point or, or two decimal place percentages. It's fucking maddening how you could nail exactly. a flavor. It's it's impossible actually. It would be like cracking a code for like the federal government's fucking nuclear codes. Yeah, I mean you'd have to you'd have to be able to, to analyze it down to molecule, and then you then you'd have an idea. And there there are people out there that do things like that. Like you'll um, there's a French website that you can go to and you can get. Uh, fairly, fairly close to what somebody did. 
Um, but even then, a, the majority of the time that I've, I've tried one of the mixes compared to somebody else's compared to the original liquid, even then it's still, there's something off. <clears throat> it's and, almost like when you go to the dollar store and you see like uh, cool water, you know, it says inspired by Paco Rabanne or cool water or whatever. It's sort of like it. It's, but when it touches your skin, it, it smells different, you know what I mean? Like, and it doesn't last as long. There's always something a little bit off. And I, I'm going to take a risk and say that if you have a flavor that you love and you try to go close to it, it's somehow not satisfying because it's not what you're looking for. You're better off creating an original flavor that you learn to love from making it yourself. Exactly. You know? And, you know, like Brian was saying, the, the, process, the process of going through uh, attempting to clone somebody's stuff is it can be a maddening process because you might be able to pick out you know three or four flavors in that somebody's using and then you're like okay i know these three or four flavors are in it and so you mix those up and you think you're close and you vape it and it's just not right and it's because they're layering in other little back notes they're throwing in a little half percent here a quarter percent there they're throwing in a little saline that you wouldn't expect or they're you know rather than using this milk that you think it was it's this milk over here they used a malted version of the milk or you know, it could be it could be any number of things, and it'll drive you absolutely nuts trying to trying to nail down a clone. And generally, I won't even I won't even I won't even try it. Like I'll just someone will say, "Can you clone this?" I'll say, "Well, no, but what's the flavor profile? I can make something else." <laughs> and a lot, you know, a lot of times the DIY journey, you know, you wind up making something that you prefer to that person's liquid, um, just through your experimentation and. You know, it, it, a lot of times, it's, especially if you get a difficult recipe, you can just be at it for, you know, weeks, months, trying to figure out exactly how do I, how do I get this flavor to taste exactly how I want it. But then, then you nail that flavor and it's exactly how you want it. You know, you get your, your rush of joy and then you have that recipe forever. And, you know, that can be a learning process though, is going through all that difficulty and trying all these different things that you learn what this note does and what that note does. And so there's, even even when you're not achieving what you want, you're still learning something as far as DIY goes. And that's kind of what the back half of why this hobby can be awesome. You, yep. know, you, you learn all the different things that all the little flavors can do and you can use those tricks later on a different recipe. I would also add that it's kind of neat, like when, when you're learning, it's better to, to really make a lot of different mixes and experiment. So I would recommend find a recipe that you know is pretty good, okay? And take that recipe and play with the percentages. So make three bottles in front of you. Take the same exact recipe and make it, you know, instead of 3% for this flavor, make it 1.5%. Instead of the next flavor, make it, instead of two, make it four. And play around. It's not going to taste good. But what it's going to do is it's going to show you about the balancing uh, and layering of flavors and how they interact with each other, just like Fresh was saying. But I think tasting it makes it so much more real to you that you yeah. understand why. You know, like, why does that flavor jump out at 4% but at 2%? I don't taste it at all. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I've been doing that a lot. You should see. I'm running out of bottles to store flavors in Fresh and my closet's full. <laughs> And I forget, like, I, my label printer went out, so now I'm writing with a marker again, which I think is probably better because those labels are fucking expensive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think I think you're right. And I should learn from you instead of trying to forge my own path. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you just keep a roll of, keep a roll of clear tape sitting around, and you just put a little, little piece of clear tape over your writing. That way it doesn't smear when you're shaking the bottle and coming in all sweaty from whatever whatever activity you happen to be getting getting yourself up to. I do a lot of sweaty activities, I'm just saying. Um, I feel like sometimes when I'm talking on the show, you're sitting there like a like a proud father, just secretly smiling and nodding. Like, yes, son, you'll learn. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll learn it all, Brian. You'll learn it all. Yeah. I, mean, like, I, I, I wait for most folks that start DIYing to really get into, like, some difficult recipe. And you can tell when they're in the middle of it because it's just driving them berserk. Like, they're asking questions all the time, like, what does this do? What does this do? What does this do? Can I do this in this recipe? And you'll see them for like two or three weeks. And then like you'll type that one little thing and I'll, they're like, that was it. And you know you helped them. That's that's always rewarding. <laughs> what, what, uh, so, um, somebody had said that Charlie Noble peanut butter cereal was discontinued and they released it to yes. the public. They and did. that's that's amazing. And that's why I really respect Wayne for releasing his, um, like right here I have Rodenite. 
and I actually bought his concentrates from his website, which are really fair uh, priced. But not only does he release the flavor concentrates available at, a, at an affordable price, but he also releases the recipe for that on his website. And I have found that if I was doing this not as a show and not as a um, as a hobby, and if I didn't have a lot of free time, I would be more into concentrates that are pre-mixed than I would be into actually mixing my own recipes and stuff like that. So I think there's different levels of commitment when it comes to being a mixer. And uh, uh, concentrates are really the way it is. But what I was saying with the, with the peanut butter from uh, uh, Charlie Noble, that's a reputable company that has popular flavors that were available for sale. That is a resource that just that recipe alone is such a yep. resource of learning to see exactly how they got that flavor, read the recipe, look at the percentages and learn from it because that's, it's invaluable. Exactly. Yeah, I learned a ton from that recipe when he released it. Um, like he, he used malted milk at a, at, a, at a crazy percentage and he used vanilla custard at what I consider a crazy percentage in the recipe. But when you read his explanation on why he was doing it, it was, you're like, okay, now I, now I understand why he did this and I can apply that to my own. And that's where I picked up the. That's when I picked up saline and really started going to town on saline. And that's also why when when you hear people make definitive statements about this flavor is terrible, or this flavor you can't use it at that percentage, I think maybe for the most part that might be true, but there is always exceptions to the rule. There's always creative yeah. mixers out there that learn how to bend and flex that flavoring to meet a different need in a different area, and you'll be like, holy shit, that works. Yep, except for Flavor West cookie butter. <laughs> there you go. Flavor from DIY or die. Both agree that's a that's a fucking god awful flavor. So there you go, everybody in chat. Look for that. Let me let me grab one thing real quick because we're talking about clones, and I want to I want to share my experience with something. Okay. <clears throat> what I can do while he's while he's while Brian is grabbing something is I can show you. show you this everybody I was going to show you the base that I came up with to to use tonight Ooh, look at you base so, how low can you go <laughs> sorry that's right. that's right so uh, yellow cake by flavor West little cake batter you kind of give it an uncooked center and it actually it actually makes yellow cake a little bit richer uh, Capella's, I, I, I do like Capella's better than most other of the cake batters that are out there. Um, little toasted marshmallow just to kind of sweeten and thicken things up. Uh, some vanilla cupcake to give it a little frosting. And then a little vanilla whipped cream to add a little creaminess, a little sweetness to it. And who doesn't like a little whipped cream? So that's the base that we'll be using tonight when we do get around to mixing something. Are we going to get around to mixing something? <laughs> We can, we can, or we can just talk about it, or I can, I can just go off on a, on a, go into left field on, on something. Like, I know we talked about doing something that had uh, a fruit, a nut, and a caramel. And I made that base with that in mind. That it would be good with fruit by itself, it would be good with caramel by itself, and it would be good with a nut flavor by itself. Yes. And then you could combine all three, and it would be lovely. That's what we talked about. It is. <laughs> it's a hard prep for the show for those watching because you're going to be able to make the base for this. But the purpose of this show was not to replicate this additive mix that we're about to make. It was to make your own base from this base that we're making and then take your own flavors that you have in your, in your collection and make your own. But the base is good enough on by itself that it's going to be able to be built upon to make it you know, a bakery or to make it a fruit cream or whatever. Exactly. So, so that's what we're going to do. I just wanted to share my experience with this unicorn milk. Ah, the unicorn milk clone. Yes. Yes. This was supposedly leaked, whatever, whatever. I'm not going to talk about it. There seems to be, from reading pages and pages of comments on the ELR forum, there doesn't seem to be a final word on that. Um, it's another drama type thing. <laughs> but I can tell you that I 
unicorn milk and mother's milk were the two flavors when I started vaping that just totally blew my mind and made me want more. You know what I mean? Like I had to, I would drive long distances to get those flavors. So DIY was appealing to me because, and I'm talking about the original unicorn milk, like the pink unicorn milk. I don't know if you remember the pink. I do remember the pink unicorn milk. I loved the pink unicorn milk. Um, so I, I spent some time and I made the pink unicorn milk and I also made this um, beard number five. Beard number five clone. Yes. yes. And beer number five clone is probably one of the worst flavors that I've ever vaped that was freshly mixed. Uh, even like five days later, it was absolutely putrid. I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate it at all. Uh, after about two and a half weeks, it started coming alive. And after like three to four weeks, it's delicious now. Yeah. Are these exact? No. 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 Um, is my PG-VG ratio different than the original unicorn milk? Do I use a different brand PG or VG? Um, there's so many variables, so many variables. Mm -hmm. And also my taste buds and my memory of what flavors tasted like three years ago or two and a half years ago is different today than it was then too. Absolutely. Uh, my, my palate's more sophisticated with, I mean, back then Cutwood was premium and you had a couple others like Space Jam and a, you know, a couple other flavors. There wasn't the multitude of choices that we have today. Yeah. So, so many more choices. Yeah. So, so much better time to be a vapor than when we got started. <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. So anyway, I just, I figured I'd share that with everybody out there. Yeah, Sugar Bear. Sugar Bear. What did I, yep. what did I, I made, I made a Sugar Bear. I took the Sugar Bear clone and I, I forget what I called it. I called it like Stevia Bear or something like that. Wouldn't you love to like pay like a grand for a weekend at like Cutwood or like one of these places and like sign a no compete clause where you wouldn't take any of the information that you learn, but look at like some of the top recipes in the industry and like yeah. learn what, wouldn't that be so awesome? Or just, I would, I would just a weekend where I could pick their brain about what I should be doing here, what I should be doing there. Like they, they would never get rid of me. Like I wouldn't leave after the weekend was up and be like, Hey, listen, I'm still here under your desk. I've chained myself to the leg over here. Uh, so what do you do here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, somebody was commenting earlier about how your favorite flavor that you fell in love with, and now you can't vape it anymore because it tastes like shit. And, and that's part of the psychology of vaping also, that your brain, <clears throat> some flavors I, I can seem to vape forever and they still uh, bring me enjoyment. Other flavors, like uh, what was that one flavor from... It was a cereal milk flavor from Tilios, the milk. Yeah, the Tilios milk. Oh, dude, I fucking love that flavor. Now I can't even smell it without getting nauseous. <laughs> uh, it's just something, something clicked up here, and it's changed me. So, it's interesting how much goes into this. Yeah. So let's mix fresh. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do something? Um, so, I I was sitting here. I'm sitting over here thinking. Yeah. As I do. Um, yes. Yes. So for my variation on this, I think I'm going to do all three at once. And I think I'm going to do a caramel apple pistachio cake. Mm. That's what my brain's telling me to do. And it gives me a chance to Gives me a chance to shrack off at the mouth again about this sort of thing. I think I'm going to make one mix fresh. I'm not going to go crazy like you because I don't have the experience. Yes. And I think I'm going to ask you questions when I, after I get my base done. I think I'm going to yeah. ask you about what I should do. But I got some peanut butter flavorings in. Okay. Which peanut butters do you have? Um, I have... So let me come over here. I have... What is this signature peanut butter? TFA. Okay, so I have TFA. That's what you recommended. Yeah, that's a good one to get started with. Uh, I also have double chocolate clear. So you I want to do a peanut butter chocolate cake? Yeah, like a peanut butter chocolate maybe. Okay. 
I also got my acetylpyrazine. I don't know if I'm going to need that. You do if you're going to put chocolate in it. I also have... This is a pretty good smelling flavor. I don't know if it is good, but it's called peanut butter cereal balls. Is that... One on one? One on one. Generally, their cereals are garbage. But are, are they? If you feel like experimenting with it, I will happily well, sit back and let you do it. Like they're like when it comes to like their fruits and their bakeries and their creams and custards, they're they're usually they're usually a joy to work with. But cereals, for for whatever reason, a lot of times their cereals aren't hot. But um, peanut butter cereal is kind of a different beast entirely. So they may be they may be onto something. Maybe I'll mix that by itself first at the percentage they recommend just to taste it. But I'll go with what you know to make this recipe flavor uh, tasty. Should should I also grab the um, <clears throat> Inawara chocolate? Or should uh, I just go with the chocolate clear? I also have brownie V1, too. You have the Capella's brownie V1? Mm-hmm. That's such a strong flavor. I know. But it smells delish. It's a, it's, a really, it's a really good chocolate to play around with. It's Like I said, it's just super-duper strong. Too much uh, for this? It could be, yeah. It could overwhelm everything else that's in there. Let's not do that, then. Maybe, am I good with just this? Uh, yeah, double the, chocolate and the TFA peanut butter. I think you're yeah. good there. Okay, good. And the acetylpyrazine. Yeah, and some saline. And some saline, which I have also. We need a little saline for that. Awesome. So let's do... So I'm going to add Fuji apple to this recipe at 2%. I'm going to add double apple by Capella. Double apple by Capella at 2%. Next... I'm going to, so there's that. So caramel apple, so I need caramel. So my favorite caramel, everybody, is salted caramel by Flavor West. And salted caramel by Flavor West, which means I need to break out my butterscotch. Butterscotch by Flavor West. So this is a secret that I, I, I say it all the time, so I'm not sure it's much of a secret at this point. But if you want a good caramel flavor, you need to add a little bit of butterscotch. If you want a good butterscotch flavor, you need to add a little bit of caramel. And I, I use these two flavors, the, the salted caramel and my butterscotch and my flavorless butterscotch in unison in any recipe that I'm doing a caramel or a butterscotch with. So, because they are the best. And then I need pistachio. I believe I flavor. Yep, flavor of pistachio. And then the real secret to, to mixing with pistachio, everybody, is the pistachio flavor that you're used to in like ice creams and not just eating like straight raw pistachios, but like that pistachio flavor that's in ice creams and all that other, and, and um, like cakes and everything else. The flavor you're actually tasting a lot of is actually toasted almond. And so I like to use a combination of pistachio and toasted almond to achieve that pistachio flavor. So I'm going to add some toasted almond by Capella to this mix. Okay. Somebody had made a recommendation last week, and it made sense to me, and I agree with them, that when we're doing our mixes, we should do it <clears throat> one at a time. So you should do your mix, and then I should do my mix. Go ahead and... No, you, you, I want you to do it first. The reason why is that people want to watch by weight and also by uh, volume Okay. when they're learning. So at least for a couple of shows, maybe we can try that real quick. I'm, so still, you, work, I'm still working my percentages here. Yeah, I haven't done mine either yet. You want to share your screen with everyone maybe? I can. That might help. What he's doing is he, he's on ELR, and he's tweaking his recipe before he starts to make it because it's easier to have a visual of what he's going to make. Okay, so what you do is you come over and you look at your percentage that everybody likes. So butterscotch is going to be at one. Ah. We'll come back over to this. We're trying to t 
tell me what to do, Zoom. Zoom's telling me what to do. There we go. Next. Show you guys how to do this. This is in the flavorless flavor list section under resources. Just go to flavor list. So next thing you'll want to look up is salted caramel. Salted caramel. Then you go over here and you hit recipes because people misspell things. They don't look to see if the flavor's around. So you go look and find the one that has the most right here. This has 3,108 recipes already made with salted caramel. It should be right around 3%. Yep, there you go. 3%. We come back here. And this is just the easy way to do this. So 3% Flavor West Salted Caramel, 1% Flavor West Butterscotch, Flavor at Pistachio is a very strong flavor. So we're going to go at 1, if I remember it correctly. And I'll double check real quick for you. Show you how to do that. Just that easy. I'm sorry if everybody's having trouble seeing that. I can't make that any bigger, so... Uh, it should be got. the whole. It should be the whole thing. Uh, no, they be able to see it. If they're on full screen, if they're on their phones, they're gonna, not going to be able to. Of course, yeah. I misspelled pistachio. Pistachio. I think I said pistachio. Did you? Yeah. Flavor art pistachio. Yep, one percent. One percent. One percent is plenty. Next, we're going to go over here, and we're going to do. Toasted almond. Toasted almond, everybody. Once again, you just come over, sort it by the recipes. It's probably right there. Yep. Toasted almond right here. Capella's toasted almond. 2%. So we're not going to do a full 2% because we don't want it to overwhelm anything. So we're just going to do that at 1% as well. Next, we scroll down, and as you can see, I'm just adapting the recipe that we already had. Okay, so here is the base. Here's our base flavors, all these blue flavors right here. That is our base, and that's what we started with. But we decided we wanted to do a caramel apple pistachio cake. So here's what we added to it. Here's how we built upon that. This right here, this two and two, uh, I actually prefer the double apple at three, but I'm going to keep it down just a touch. Uh, actually, I'm thinking about cutting that Fuji down another half percent. I'm going to do that. Otherwise, we're going to start overwhelming everything else that's in this recipe. Fuji is going to 1.5. 1.5. There we go. So there we go. Fuji at 1.5, double apple at 2, the salted caramel at 3, the butterscotch at 1, pistachio at 1, toasted almond at 1. So this is what we've added to our initial base to get a far more complicated recipe than what we started out with. Hope that makes sense for everybody. I can't see the comments. <laughs> There we go. So Brian, are you gonna start mixing while I gather those flavors? Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, I muted myself so you wouldn't hear me rustling through things. Uh, I'm adding my recipe to ELR right now. And um, the flavor that I had, the peanut butter, was that DX peanut butter from the flavor per, uh, no, apprentice? No, it's just TFA peanut butter. The, the, the DX okay. peanut butter is deluxe. They took out all the dyke tones and all the good all the goodness. I see. What percentage should I use for the peanut butter? Uh, for peanut butter, I think peanut butter is a, like a, I want to say 4, 4%. Why don't you run and get your recipes while I'm asking you questions? Okay. Give me what do you think? Here. You know, better number of recipes is going to be a bunch. 
16,187 for TPA peanut butter, and I believe it's at 4% generally. Okay. Um, was I right? 4%? I was right, Brian. Every once in a while, I know what I'm doing. You know what you're doing most of the time, Fresh. Double chocolate clear. Double chocolate clear, I believe, is at 2. But once again, let me double check. So what we're doing, guys, is we're building our base, and then we're taking that base, and we're making specific recipes from that base to make it more toward our flavor profile or what we're trying to shoot for. People's medium percent is four. I would actually do it at three. So go to, go to three, Brian. Go to three. Now, should I tweak any of the other flavors in this recipe, or should I leave the other ones the same? Because I know this we're talking about... The cake, goes, the cake yeah. should be fine. And last but not least, we have acetylpyrazine. Acetylpyrazine is, what is it? It's point, like point 0.1, I want to say it's point 0.15. Is that TFA also? Uh, yes, it's it's uh, TFA acetylpyrazine 5% TPA is what it's called. down to there we go i'll get you i'll get you a correct percent here okay uh acetylpyrazine is just 0.1 point 0.1 point one. wow point 0.1 percent that is so small it is i've heard that before <laughs> that's right yes that's right all right so go shopping for your goods huh <laughs> i said go shopping for your goodies Okay, and then for saline, you want point two. Uh, can I can I add that? To, yeah, I can add that to my recipe, right? Yes, it's just 0.9% saline, saline solution. Saline. 0.9 saline solution, and I'm going to use it at 0.9. There you go. All right, so my recipe is up, and... I think what I'm going to start doing, guys, um, since I have an account on ELR, I've been keeping my recipes private because I don't want anybody making the same mistakes that I'm making. But once I become more confident with my mixes, I'll start making the, the TVC ELR recipes public so you guys can tweak them and play around with them yourself and sort of maybe taste what I'm experiencing on the show. And also, uh, I know Fresh has fresh peas, which are all banging. They're a great resource for learning different mixes that Fresh makes. If I'm not mistaken, fresh, fresher peas? Fresher peas, yes. It looks like fresh pies when I look at it at first. That's what, uh, that's what Wayne thought I was. He thought I was freshy pies. <laughs> freshy pies. That is how it's spelled. I like hair pie, I'm just saying. I'm a huge fan. I'm a hair guy. No, a lot of people don't. It's generational, I think. I think since I grew up stealing uh, adult mags from my dad from the 70s and early 80s, I just... I don't know. I like natural. There's just a there's a there's a sense of class and 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 cocaine about 1980s porn that I just find appealing, you know? Yep. There's also the mystery of a woman. What's what's it's like a discovery process, you know? Or men for that matter. I don't know if women are into <laughs> men like that, but anyway. Let's continue on with our mix, shall we? Okay, so for this recipe, how much are you making? Fresh 30 milliliters like you I'm always just do? I'm making 30. Okay. Yep. You guys are getting that behind the scenes view again. Of a fresh 03 mixing video. Yeah, I'm sorry for those people that are <laughs> fucked up by our conversation. There was some downtime on the on the conversation, so we went a little dark. Sometimes it happens. You get a, yeah. you get a couple guys together who are, who are friends that feel they can be honest with each, with each other about things. Yes. Sometimes you start talking about women from the 1980s who like cocaine. Yep. 
I think it was the pie thing when we started talking about freshie pies. That's I right. started thinking about hair pies. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah. So anyway, let's mix. Let's mix. Mix, we must. Mm. Fresh, did you say I'm using 0.9% uh, saline? Uh, no, 0. 0.2. 0.2%. Well, thank you, whoever. Who was that? G Matt, thank you for that correction. Because <laughs> I would have put 0.9 there. Totally would have went running with it. Okay, so here I am. Rock me like a hurricane. Rock me like a hurricane. All right. So let's go ahead and start this with yellow cake. Flavor West yellow cake uh, at 2%, so 0.6 mLs. Flavor Watch Yellow Cake is just kind of, it's kind of the go-to standard as far as cake, as far as cakes go. It does have some fructose in it, so if you're against vaping a little fructose, you may want to look elsewhere. But as far as just something that tastes like exactly like it sounds right away, Yellow Cake. Exactly like it sounds. So, so our next flavor was Cake Batter. Should be probably this guy. Nope. This guy. Yes, cake batter by Capella. And what we're doing is we're adding a little richness and, a, and an almost half baked note using this cake batter right here. And we're doing that at half a percent. My li little piece of life advice for everybody never go over a half percent. You never need any more than a half percent when it comes to. Capella's cake batter. Otherwise, it overpowers everything else in your recipe. So be careful with this flavor. And I just shot a needle in there. That happens. You're human, fresh. You're flesh and blood. That's right. So we fish it out and we carry on. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are gone. <laughs> you and I should. <laughs> Not do covers. Probably not. Don't you cry no more. I think it's too. I think it's. I think the world's missing out, Brian. I think so too. There we go. Now we're back on track. Back on track. Hmm. Next. Is toasted marshmallow. This is just sweetness and density. Just sweetness and density to your mix. Hey, toasted marshmallow. Buy big bottles of toasted marshmallow. Oh yeah. Toasted marshmallow. We just need one percent of toasted marshmallow. Point three mLs. We should have Singer of Truth come on and sing for us what we're doing. Like, Brian is mixing, yeah. Oh man, like he he would just put us so to shame, though. No, he could sing for us. Like everything we say, he'll sing it in the background. Oh, I'm totally down with Singer of Truth doing that. That would be awesome. Like that dude can just rip some chords with yep. his vocals. Heck of a drum player too. I've seen him and his sons. Hell yeah. So vanilla cupcake. Here's the other half. Of, here's the other half of our cake, everybody. So we need two percent of this, so we need 0.6 mLs. <coughs> what is DIY e-liquid mixology talking about? Looks like the drawing is happening now. I'll post the winner in the comments. What is that? Oh, he's doing a he's doing a drawing. Are you giving something away out there? In my on, on this show? Is he? I don't know. I'm confused. Am Is I Mike missing Bates something? Giving something away? My, I I know he had something coming up here pretty soon, but I didn't think it was tonight. 
Vanilla whipped cream at 2%. Yeah, doesn't Mike Vapes have that 167 drawing coming up? Yeah, but that was DIY e-liquid mixology that posted. Oh, so he's saying, I was thinking maybe he, he was following Mike Vapes. Oh, he's advertising his channel. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not cool with that, by the way. So oh, uh, that's, a way to, that's a way to lose friends and negatively influence people. So I'll give you one warning, but if you do it again, you're fucking out of here. Fucking out of here. So there's the base. The base is done. The base is in. Uh, now we're going. Now we're moving on to everything else. So, Fuji Apple, the greatest apple flavor of all time. So I need 0.45 mLs. For five mLs. Next is Double Apple by Capella, which is the second greatest apple flavor of all time. Double Apple by Capella's. And I needed a full 2% of this. Mm. It does smell like, a, it, is, it does smell lovely, Brian. Yes. A lot of these flavors just smell like a little piece of heaven when you mix them up, you know? Yes. Sometimes just opening flavors and sniffing them. I know this one. Well, these, these wrappers, when I took off the double chocolate clear and the peanut butter, mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. By the way, I wasn't trying to be a dick to that person. Uh, I'm, I'm all about supporting other people and their channels, but I just asked that if you're going to advertise, and she said she wasn't, so I'm cool with that, but if you're going to advertise, just ask me. All you have to do is ask me and give me a heads up so I know I'm fair and I, I would do the same for you. Flavor West Butterscotch, so. my favorite butterscotch flavor. Generally, I think it's a fairly solid consensus that Flavor West makes the best butterscotch. So we need 0.3 mLs of the butterscotch. Three mLs of butterscotch. Salted caramel mm. by Flavor West. My favorite caramel flavor. My second favorite is the caramel candy by TFA. Now, Flavor do you Art think makes a nice caramel though, Brian? They do make yes. a nice caramel. I actually have one. It's quite lovely. Do you, do you think they have a 0.9% saline in that already? In the in the salted caramel? Yeah. Um, it's not all that salty of a flavor. No. No. 0.9 mLs. No, it's just it's kind of a rich it's kind of the, a rich a richer fuller caramel flavor. Hmm. All right, now we're moving on to our pistachio. So, flavor art pistachio. Notice I buy little bottles of this stuff. I don't use it often, but when I do, it's always lovely. It's always a lovely mix. I do like it, but I always put that toasted almond in with it now. Once I learned that, because this is a raw pistachio, Brian. Just a raw pistachio. So I need 1% of 0.3 mLs. 0.3 mLs. Mm. And finally, toasted almond. Our toasted almond is also at a percent. And this is going to give us that more traditional pistachio flavor that we're Americanized and used to. Just 1%. One point three mLs. There we go. My mix is done, Brian. Oh, well, let me get started on mine then, shall we? I'm... I'm excited for you to mix. I'm excited for me to mix too. My hands get bored and I start doing strange things with them, so I'm, I need to occupy them. Especially Do you need with... hand sanitizer. <laughs> I might. Okay. All right. All right. So first, we're going to start off with this uh, peanut butter, and this yes. is TPA peanut butter. TPA and... signature. Same thing. Yep. Good stuff. And let me just go down to my recipe here. So I'm going to be doing this in grams. 
So it's 2.4 grams of peanut butter. I'm making 60 milliliters in my mix. So 2.4. Two point three nine should be okay. Yes. You know, I I could put my VG in one of these side pockets here, like it like a like a VG holster, Brian. Mm. I mean, so let's oh man, see. I'm fuzzy. Son of a gun! Don't forget to tear. And then we're gonna grab the mix of saline because it's saying for me to add that early. Let's do this. Everybody out there is saying that they can't wait for eye contact time. I'm getting there. I've been working myself up the whole show for that. Oh, you know what? Point I haven't done it on two. this show before. So we're going to do point one two of this. Should be three drops. Well, that drop didn't even... Oh, there we go. Look at you, you're, look at you. The fucking master himself. It actually went to 0.14, but that was three drops. Good enough, what we're aiming for is that three drops. Yeah. So we're gonna tear that. And then we're gonna add a little bit of cake yellow. Yes. <clears throat> Everybody's got their lipstick ready for tonight, so I'm looking forward to that. Open this. And how much yellow are we doing? Let's see. Kick yellow. Kick yellow should be 1.2. Yeah, 1.25 for me. 1.25, yes. That's right. Caramel apple pistachio cake. Oh, man. I might need the chats, the chats help with this. Come up with a new name for this. Have we gotten them to name something yet before, Brian, on this show? I don't think so, but I'd love to. All right, everybody. So caramel apple pistachio cake. I've, I've got the, I've got it pulled up. I can see what you guys are saying now. Um, caramel apple pistachio cake. What do you think? What's a good name? What's a good name? This is a tradition on my Saturday show. You guys, the viewers get to, uh, get to name it. Sad I missed rye. Jax Miller. <laughs> cake batter 0. 0.31 breaking bad mix that's it what's up really call it d's nuts come on mark sabatos we're better than that these nuts is far too easy <laughs> oh i better save my shaking better. you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take my fancy apron here i take one of my molly gear straps here I'm going to put my unicorn bottle right there for whoever you lucky are. Carb cake. Carb cake's not bad. Stash cake. Stash cake's not bad. 1.8 of double chocolate clear. Nice. You know, like we should, we could take a play, a play off the stash cake, and do like Selleck cake. Like who, who in history has had a better mustache than Tom Selleck? Like for consistently as long as that man has. I would say Tom Selleck and maybe uh, what's that guy's name uh, from? I know, from, I know exactly who you're thinking about. The dude yeah. he has white hair. Yeah, he's from the. He was in the movie with, uh, you know, the dude. Yeah. Oh, in the beginning, Someone, Sam Neil or Tom, uh, yes, is it Sam Neil? Is it Sam you know, Neil? You know what I'm talking about, though. I know who you're talking about. Pistachio fairy cake. That is a hell of a mustache he has. Yeah. 
Burt Reynolds. Sell it cake. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Sell it cake is not a bad one though. Sam Elliott. We could call it. Sam Elliott. That's who it is. We could call it Elliott cake. I'm thinking sell it cakes are, are best, or or we could just call it Tom Selleck, or Sam Elliott. Like people would totally get it when they go and look at the recipe. How about Tom Elliott, or Tom Elliott? Tom Elliott. Tom Elliott cake. Or. S S or Selliot cake. Selliot cake. <laughs> All right, toasted marshmallow, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to do toasted marshmallow 0. 0.66. And I just dropped something. Call it Burt Reynolds. I I'm fine with Burt Reynolds, Kimmy. Yeah, Burt Reynolds totally is good. Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds had a fine stash. He still has a fine stash. He's a s they don't make men like that anymore. No, they don't. He was a sex symbol. Magnum cake. Chuck Norris has a beard. Like a... Tom Sam cake. I'm thinking just call it Burt Reynolds. Just the recipe's just straight Burt Reynolds. Like when someone goes to read the recipe, all they, all they get is that scene from... Uh, that scene where he has himself all greased up. Just a terrible image in their mind. And that's what this recipe will remind them of. Now, this recipe could be good. It could be bad. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? We've done our we've done our darndest to make it taste pretty good, though. I'm just calling it Burt Reynolds. I don't know how I don't have vanilla cupcake. What the fuck? You not have vanilla cupcake? I, I know I do. I just can't seem to find anything when I need it. <laughs> That's how it always goes. That's where I'm at in my in my journey right now. What'll ha ah, there it is. What'll happen is, Fresh, I'll look for it, I won't find it, I'll order it, and then I'll find it like 10 minutes later. Yeah, Burt Reynolds is from a time when testosterone meant something in the world. All right, so we're saving Burt Reynolds. Who came up with Burt Reynolds? Who, who out there? I forget who came up with Burt Reynolds, but that's just a fantastic name for an e-liquid recipe. So, everybody. There you go. Who's taking who's taking credit for the Burt Reynolds out there? I know one of you. See, Magnum PI would be like a pistachio, like a pistachio pie, like a pistachio apple pie. I know someone out there is gonna take credit for. Did Jax come up with it or Jennifer Zaragoza? Did you come up with that, Jennifer Zaragoza? Jennifer Zaragoza did? Oh, Wilford Brimley. Oh. Wilford Brimley. Oh, that has to be an oatmeal recipe, though. All right, so I need 64.47 of my VG Mix. Ken Carlton, you were the first one. Ken Carlton says he's the one who claimed it. So, Ken Carlton, I need you to come a little closer to the camera. Come a little closer to your screen. We're going to have a moment, you and I. Uh, actually, it should be about 45 seconds to a minute and a half, Ken Carlton. You and me, buddy. Here's your reward for being creative. <laughs> I love awards from Fresh. That's right. That's right. I may not do giveaways, but I'll, I'll shake a bottle of VG at you like nobody else. I deserve an award for trying to pour this VG while you're doing that. While touching inappropriately. You notice how you can always only see one hand at a time? That's why. That's why. I haven't had pants on the entire episode. Yep. That was the this purpose of the having these. <laughs> yep. Easy access.
There you go. Nice. There we go. Ken Carlton, hope that was as good for you as it was for me. That should work. 64.47, 63.48. I think you're good. I feel good. Got a little extra lubrication on here. Right. For all them latex lovers out there. Get a little VG on there. Get a little extra shiny. There we go. A little bit of this sound. I'm glad we had that moment together, Ken Carlton. Glad we had that time together, you and I. Somebody asked me, do I do I waste a lot of this liquid um, off of the sides? No, not particularly. No, the way that this uh, this long snout of a, a funnel on here is, it allows me to invert it for long periods of time if I'm that care, uh, care like if I care that much about a little bit. But I don't give a fuck, personally. <laughs> I really don't. If I lose a mill and I save 10 minutes of having to sit and watch it drip out, I don't give a fuck. But that's where I'm at today. I might change, you know what I mean? Exactly. Okay. So I'm really not that far behind you, Fresh. I'm no. going to be... I'm going to be pulling mine pretty quick, quickly. So, yeah, see? So I do this, a little bit of this, and just recklessly pour because that's how I roll. The Six. apple definitely has a throat hit right away. But you're doing, you're getting a nice, the caramels, the caramel, the salted caramels there, and we're getting a nice bakery in the background. That's just kind of what we're aiming for. Pistachio will come in sometime in the next five days or so. Five to seven. Yeah. But if you yeah, wanted to, see fresh how I can leave my hand off the funnel and it stays yeah, it in there. Yeah, it just keeps on going. It'll keep on going if you want to get that last little, last little bit. I think that was a very wise purchase. I've been enjoying them. I bought three of them, and I use them in rotation all the time. I also use them to measure breast milk when I buy it off eBay. You know, anyway, there's a market for everything, Brian. Yep. So why don't we pop a cap on this bitch? I'm gonna pop a cap on this bitch and close this. Turn it off. Mm. Pistachios. The pistachios actually coming through a little bit. It's quite nice. Mm. And that's just, that you're getting that savory on top of all that sweet and that bakery in the background. I like that. Exactly, Ken. Yeah, you can get it. You can get as long as they're LDPE, you're good. You can get like a four pack. Of, you can get a two pack at Bed Bath and Beyond for three, four bucks. It's not, yeah. not a lot. <clears throat> so I got mine. You, Gregory you Turner it. wants me to stare at him tonight. Greg Turner really wants it. I'm not sure you should. I think you maybe you should deny him. Do you think he'll it'll build up the anticipation more if I deny him another week? That's right. Actually, you know what, Fresh? I think we I can turn on uh, fan funding. And people can actually put their money where their mouth is and how bad they want eye contact. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. That's what that's what Phenom does. Phenom just okay. goes, nope. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna actually do a four way with mine. I'm gonna do uh, O R Church. Church is a good one. Yep, because I know he loves me. Not. And uh, Gregory Turner, and I'm gonna do Timmers. Timmers, good call on the Timmers. Yeah, because Timmers needs all the attention he can get. It's really nice that he's letting us do that concert in his backyard, Brian. 
I know. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to start slow and then just work it up. Breathe, you'll, you'll, you'll go down for the power, but then fade so quick. Light up on the table. Good call. Mm-hmm. We're done. Looks good. Yeah, buddy. Hope you all enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed it. That's right. Yeah. All right, let me try. What do you what do you think the steep time of this recipe is going to be? Fresh, seven days. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Almost universally, is seven days. Peanut butter will take a peanut butter is going to take five to seven. The cake is, the cake is good right now, but I think you should get at least a decent chocolate peanut butter flavor. But it's going to definitely get way better. Oh, someone's complaining. That the cursor's on my face. There you go, everybody. I moved for you. That it's kind of right by my cat, by my stuffed cat here. So. The cursor's not there anymore. Oh, I was picking my nose. I was aiming to pick my nose with it. <laughs> if you think my leg's white, you should see my dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. All right. That peanut butter is lovely fresh. There you go. That is a lovely peanut butter. Yep, you got the acetylpyrazine and the saline working on that already. Wow. The chocolate's hiding right in the back, but it blends really nice, so it almost like could be there or could not be there. It just adds to the overall flavor of that bakery. Yeah, and it's gonna that, that chocolate's going to creep forward over the next seven days or so. Lovely flavor. That is a good fucking vape. I'm going to make that public because that is good. There's two very, very, very different recipes, everybody, off the exact same base. Like we used, we had our creamy bakery base that's going to be good with fruits, nuts, caramels, creams, that sort of thing. And then we took that and we both went very different directions with it. Like Brian went chocolate peanut butter and I went caramel apple pistachio. So... That's, I think that's kind of the, the emphasis point for the, for the entire episode tonight is having something like that, like that, that base how low can you go, and just being able to build on that just and come up with something completely different. Completely different. There we go. So this is... Reynolds. So I'm going to save your original name, which was Bruce. How low can you go? And I'm going to call this Peanut. How low can you go? Nice. With P E E. Peanut. And then the nut is N U T T. This is 227. So if you're looking for this recipe that I made tonight, it's called Peanut. How low can you go? And it's under my recipes, and my recipes are under the name. Langston Hughes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, under the name TVC Space Elite. And if you go to ELR right now, once he hits that save button, he will be the very top recipe. The very top recipe. And that allows you to follow him and see what he gets himself up to if he decides that something's good enough for a public release. Well, I've already thought about once I start getting a little bit better at this whole process fresh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be, uh, you know... All right, so it should be public. Perfect, and mine is called Burt Reynolds. <laughs> if you want to follow me over there, it should be one of the top like five or ten recipes. There you go. So anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight for Bruce. I can't, I can't not do that. Bruce. Yeah. Um, 
next week, let's let's do a little bit of business to make sure that people don't need something. And also, please follow us on the uh, the Facebook group for Fresh from the Kitchen, because that's where if we miss something on the show, we forget to post something. All the links, everything you need for everything. Kimmy Vapes is on it. She's like yeah. she's like a honey badger of vape organization for mixing. She's a, she's all about that DIY life. Yep. All right, so build your base was this week. Uh, next week is we're going to rework chocolate shakes. Yeah, next week is going to be rework chocolate shakes. And the following week, and you can start your organization, and Kimmy, you can put the recipe up for this, but we're going to do shake and vape bro nuts. Yep. And, um, yeah. There you go. And I just dropped a recipe or just dropped a video right now, everybody, for a vanilla ice cream base. So you can make blueberry ice cream, strawberry ice cream, pistachio ice cream, mango ice cream, caramel ice cream, chocolate ice cream, whatever you want. I just dropped a video on how to do how to get a richer ice cream flavor rather than using the like the TPA or the Capella's vanilla bean ice cream, which I, I I don't find either of those to be as rich as I would prefer for an ice cream. So I did a vanilla ice cream recipe for you guys. I'm really enjoying this. So that's it, everybody. Much love to my mix fam out there. Thank love you. the community. And... Uh, mm-hmm. Practice your mixes. We're going to see. And if also, if you're going to be uh, anywhere in the area of Detroit this weekend, uh, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, uh, Fresh and myself will be attending ECC in Detroit at the Cabo Center. So, yeah, I'm the little co- guy. He's the little guy. I'm the big guy. And we're going to have some fucking man love. So, That's yeah, right. if you think that uh, virtual mixing is, is, is a turn on, come out to the Detroit Expo and Find out what happens. I mixed up a thousand milliliters and sent it to Don. There so, you go. There is going to be DIY to be had. I think I did strawberry rhubarb pie. I did the strawberry banana yogurt because I've been vaping the hell out of that. And I did one more. I forget what it is. <laughs> But thanks, everybody, for joining us. I hope everybody's enjoying the show as the journey continues. I know that I've learned so fucking much. I want to thank you, Fresh, for all of your knowledge, your patience, and, and helping the community. This is, uh, this is what I love to do. This is what I love to do is help, help, and, help and mix. Help and mix. The Kobo Center. Thank you, Turk. Yep. And uh, thank, thank you once again for this, Fresh. Yes. Blow much man loves that. Daniel Montoya, you killed my father. Prepare to die. Beautiful. And uh, we'll be back next week, guys, Monday. I'll be getting back from Detroit in the afternoon on Monday, and I'll have some time to prep for the show. And uh, we'll see you same time, same place, right here. So much love, everybody. Later, everybody. You can go catch the thing.